it's a gigantic shark, a creepy marine reptile, or any of the other crazy creatures in between. Here are the top 10 prehistoric sea creatures the government wants to bring back to life. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Zephactinus. Zephactinus was a prehistoric fish that lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 85 million years ago. It was a predatory fish that could grow up to 20 feet in length and weighed up to 1,500 pounds, making it one of the largest bony fish of all time. This fish had a long, streamlined body with powerful jaws and sharp teeth that allowed it to hunt and devour smaller fish and marine reptiles. It had a unique adaptation in its skeleton with a hinged lower jaw that could open very wide, allowing it to swallow prey whole. How terrifying is that? Fossils of this fish have been found in North America, particularly in what is now Kansas and Alabama, as well as in Europe and South America. It is believed that this fish went extinct along with the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous period, around 66 million years ago. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Godzilla shark. With a name like that, this creature is surely anything but disappointing. About 300 million years ago, these guys ruled the sea and were one of the most terrifying sea creatures ever on our planet. Fossils Fossils of these guys have been found in the Mizano Mountains, which lie east of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they were found in 2013 by paleontologist John Paul Hodnett. So think of a massive shark, but now picture it covered in scales, like a reptile. Okay, now add 12 rows of super sharp teeth, and also the largest dorsal fin spines of any shark that has ever lived. Okay, so now you've pretty much got a Godzilla shark. It was nicknamed the Godzilla shark because of its size, as the skeleton is the largest fossil of its kind ever discovered in the area, as well as the fact that its fin spines are so intriguing to look at. While it was called the Godzilla shark upon its discovery, it has since received a more official name of Hoffman's dragon shark, both to honor the family that owned the land where the skeleton was found, and as an homage to its monstrous and reptilian appearance. In our number 8 spot today we have the Temnodontosaurus. Temnodontosaurus is a genus of extinct marine reptile belonging to the group of ichthyosaurs. They lived during the Jurassic period approximately 180 to 150 million years ago. These guys were a large predator that could grow up to 33 feet or 10 meters long, with a very long and streamlined body that allowed it to swim quickly through the water. These guys had a long snout filled with sharp teeth that it likely used to catch and eat fish and squid. Fossil evidence suggests that they may have also been cannibalistic, with larger individuals preying on smaller ones. Like in ichthyosaurs, these guys gave birth to live young rather than laying eggs. I mean, it's the ocean. Several species of these guys have been described with the most well known being T. platyodon. This species was first described in the early 19th century and is known from fossil remains found in Europe, particularly in Germany and the UK. T. platyodon was named for its flattened teeth, which were adapted for crushing the shells of its prey. Overall, these guys were a formidable predator that dominated the Jurassic seas. Its large size and sharp teeth made it a fearsome sight for any smaller creatures that happened to cross its path. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Tylosaurus. These creatures belong to the family of Mosasaurs, and they have long eel-like bodies that allowed them to smoothly cruise through the waters. They had the ability to have intense bursts of speed that propelled them to their prey, which they could quickly take down. The snout of these creatures is thought to have been quite large and robust compared to other species of Mosasaurs, which has led researchers to believe that they may have used it to their advantage. To do this, they might have rammed into larger prey so that they were stunned. This gave them time to turn around and finish the prey with their large jaws. Despite these specialized skills, it seems as though these guys weren't very picky with what they ate as they have been found with all kinds of remains found in their stomach area. These creatures were very large, but they are also way faster and more agile compared to other mosasaurs. What more could you want in a prehistoric predator? In our number 6 spot today, we have Heliocosis moracensis. These guys are an extinct animal that lived around 520 20 million years ago during the Cambrian period. They were a small, bizarre looking creature with a spiral shaped body and a mouth surrounded by tentacles. These guys are known from fossil remains found in Morocco. Scientists believe that these guys were a filter feeder using their tentacles to capture plankton from the water. The spiral shape of its body may have helped to control its buoyancy.
buoyancy and to help them just stay afloat in the water. Its mouth was located at the center of the spiral and its tentacles extended outward to capture food. These guys are a very important animal in the study of early life on Earth because it belongs to a group of animals known as echinoderms. Echinoderms are a diverse group of animals that include modern day sea stars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers, all of the weird things sitting on the ocean floor. The discovery of these guys has helped scientists to better understand the evolution and the diversity of echinoderms. In our number five spot today, we have the Megalodon. Okay, my favorite, your favorite, everyone's favorite. Is any terrifying prehistoric sea creatures list truly complete without an appearance from the Meg? Megalodons are one of the largest sharks to have ever existed. They were huge, they were terrifying, they were apex predators, and they are the creatures that inspired the tales of Jaws or the Meg. The teeth on these sharks are so large that they are three times larger than the teeth of a modern great white shark. With teeth that size, you can only imagine how large this shark would have been. It's pretty tough to figure out exactly why the Megalodon died out. I mean, they were one of the largest, scariest creatures who shouldn't have had any trouble getting food, but that might not be the case. Some believe it was the cooling waters, others believe it was the competition for food. Whatever the case in the end, while the Megalodon is an incredible creature in history, I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief that they aren't currently swimming around our oceans. Or are they? In our number four spot today, we have the Opabinia regalis. Opabinia regalis is an extinct animal that lived around 505 million years ago during the Cambrian period. It was a small, bizarre looking creature with a long, segmented body that measured up to about seven centimeters in length. Pretty tiny compared to the other giants on this list. Opabinia had five eyes and a nozzle like proboscis at the front of its body, which is likely used to grab prey from the sea floor. Opabinia is an important animal in the study of early life on Earth because it belongs to a group of animals known as arthropods. Arthropods are a diverse group of animals that includes things like insects, spiders, and crustaceans. Opabinia is unique among arthropods because of its unusual body plan and its feeding habits. They likely fed on small invertebrates and other small animals on the sea floor. Its proboscis may have been used to probe the sediment for prey, and its five eyes likely helped it to locate prey in low light conditions. These these guys are known from fossil remains found in the Burgess Shale Formation in British Columbia right here in Canada. The Burgess Shale is a world famous fossil site that has yielded many important discoveries in the study of early life on Earth. Opabinia is just one of the many fascinating and bizarre creatures that lived during the Cambrian period. In our number three spot today we have the Helicorprion. This animal existed somewhere around 250 million years ago and while it looks more like a shark than anything else, scientists now know that that it was actually a creature that is related more closely to chimeras, which are a fish that separated from the shark family about 400 million years ago. So why is this animal just so scary and terrible to look at? Well, that is due to the incredibly unsettling spiral saw formation of teeth that this creature had right on their lower jaw. Yeah. An orthodontist's dream, truly. It's also not like this creature was just born with this teeth that they had for the rest of their lives. No, of course not. They had teeth that could grow and new teeth could even form. Imagine being in the ocean and you see a huge creature swim up to you that has four spiral saws for teeth. Yeah. No thanks, never going swimming. In our number two spot today, we have Cephalaspis. Cephalaspis is an extinct fish that lived around 400 to 360 million years ago during the Devonian period. It has a flattened armored head and a small streamlined body that measured up to about 60 centimeters in length. These guys likely lived in freshwater environments and fed on small invertebrates and plankton. These guys had a bony plate on the top of their head that protected their brain and their sensory organs. This plate, known as a cephalic shield was shaped like a triangle and had two large openings for the eyes. These guys also had a pair of small paddle shaped fins near the front of their body that they used for swimming. These guys are an important animal in the study of early fish evolution because it is one of the earliest known jawless fish. Jawless fish include modern day lampreys and hagfish. They lack the jaws and paired fins that are found in most modern fish. These guys are known from their fossil remains that have been found in many parts of the world, including 
including Europe, North America, and Asia. The discovery of these guys have helped scientists to better understand the early evolution of fish and the diversification of life during the Devonian period. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have Anomalocaris. These guys are an extinct animal that lived around 500 million years ago during the Cambrian period, and they were a large predatory animal that measured up to a meter in length. These guys had a circular mouth surrounded by spiny plates, which it likely used to grasp and crush its prey. These guys are an important animal in the study of early life because they are one of the earliest known arthropods. These guys are unique among arthropods, however, because they have a very unusual body plan and also unusual feeding habits. They had a segmented body and a pair of large paddle shaped appendages at the front that helped it swim through the oceans. Its circular mouth was lined with sharp teeth and its spiny plates may have been used to grasp and manipulate their prey. These guys are known from fossil remains found in many parts of the world, including Canada, China, and Australia. They're kind of all over the place. The discovery of these guys has helped scientists to better understand the early evolution of arthropods and just, you know, what was going on during the Cambrian period. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.